Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan, this is Jim Fisher, and this is the Leica M10P. Now before the show we were talking about how this camera has a personal resonance for me. It connects to my family's history in a deep and powerful and interesting and positive way. But of course, you folks are here on YouTube to find out about this camera. And now, Jim, this is this is just such a classic design, isn't well, it? Well, it's and it's it's one that has been largely unchanged since the mid '50s. Wow. Uh, the M3 was introduced in 1956. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this camera, even more so than like its previous digital efforts, uh, is more like an M3 in design. Uh, with the M10 and now the M10P, which is kind of the upgraded premium version that costs $1,000 or so more. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this Leica finally made the dimensions of its digital bodies mm -hmm. match the film dimensions. And when you throw in an LCD and the differences between having a roll film in there versus a digital image sensor, that was a big feat for them. And now this is a full frame sensor, right? Yes. Okay. It's so a 24 megapixel CMOS full frame image sensor. And the M10P makes it an LCD <coughs> touch screen as well, which, yep. which should add some size and complexity, but doesn't. No, it's very slim for touch screen. And, and, and you know, this is a manual focus camera, so the real advantage of touch here is if you're in live view mm -hmm. and you want to focus on something, you can just double tap and punch in and then manually adjust your focus and you can hit mm -hmm. the shutter button again to see your frame and take a picture. And it, the, the other thing is here, I just I just stripped the shutter here. Let me get this close mm -hmm. to my microphone. That's the shutter noise. It's, it, it has is, a sound, but the sound is it's, subdued. It is a mechanical shutter. It is the quietest mechanical shutter I've used in any camera. Uh huh. And that includes my Leica M3. Okay. Uh, we have a comparison video in the review that has this, the M3, the M-Type 240, which was the previous digital generation, mm -hmm. the D8, Nikon D850 and the Sony A7R 3 are all included just to, in six seconds, it, it, you'll hear the shutter of each mm -hmm. one in succession and, and uh, you'll, you'll hear in comparison, shot under controlled settings, how quiet the shutter, mechanical shutter is. Now people of course are going to initially want to know about the price, so I want to dip into that before we get into more features. Leicas are expensive. Yeah. Leicas are made in Germany. Uh, mm -hmm. You're paying, and they don't sell a lot of mm -hmm. units. So you're not only paying for the cost of European labor, uh, brass, brass construction for mm -hmm. the top plate, uh, but also you're buying a product that not doesn't sell nearly as many units as your Canon 5D. This is almost an artisanal digital camera here. It is, it is it is for a very specific type of photographer, the one who loves the rangefinder experience and there is nothing else out there that does it. And like it's the only one making digital rangefinders, so if you want one, you're paying like a prices. So I, I was I was gonna say, actually, when you said, you know, oh, if you're in live view on the LCD, I was like, who buys a Leica to be live view on the LCD? Well, they've got this new 75 millimeter F1, uh, F1.2 Noctilux lens uh -huh. that's so you This is a 2814, and this is a, uh -huh. this is a big lens for Leica. The 75, I saw it at the, uh, 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 Kish, who uh, runs uh, slrlounge.com, had one at the Nikon press event the other week with the 75-1.2, and it's just like, that lens is so big. I haven't mm -hmm. shot with it, but it's actually, the lens has a tripod mount on the lens <laughs> right, because it's so right. big. And that's one where you've got such an arrow depth of field, and uh -huh. the rangefinder is accurate, but if you're really trying to get your model's eye uh -huh. for a portrait and you're on a tripod or even you handheld, want to be able to stand that back live a view, that live view is going to help a lot. There. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so it's uh, around eight thousand for the body, and that does not come with a lens, right? No, no. Okay. Uh, Leica lenses start around nineteen hundred dollars for like a fifty millimeter summer f two f two point four, which is very very small. Uh, you know, it kind of goes out to here on this lens. Mm -hmm. uh, there are also Zeiss options that range in price from 800 to a couple thousand, depending okay. on what the lens is. And Voigtlander uh, is another German lens company. They now manufacture in Japan, just like Zeiss. Uh, Leica lens is still German. Uh, but the Voigtlander is kind of your budget brand for M mount glass. Mm -hmm. And there's some new ones coming out of like the Far East. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a company called Seven Artisans, which makes a 50 millimeter F11 M mount rangefinder couple that sells for like 300 bucks. Mm -hmm. Haven't got a chance to use it yet. Would love to. But uh, also, it's on my list of things to review. If you have seven thousand dollars for a camera body, you probably have more than three hundred dollars for a lens. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can also use the Leica lenses via an adapter on a Sony. Mm -hmm. 
uh, mirrorless camera, and it will only be a matter of time before they're out for the Nikon at Z and uh, Nikon Z. I'm, I'm speaking British today. Yes. Uh, Nikon Z would be the, the British version, <laughs> <laughs> uh, or the ca Canon ESR, which was just announced. I imagine there will be M mount adapters for those really quickly because it's just a mechanical device to match the two. Okay, we're going to flash back to the history of Leica in a moment, but let's take some questions. What about the retro Fuji films? Aren't they digital rangefinders? They're not rangefinders. They don't have. A, they do not have an optical rangefinder. Uh, they're a rangefinder style. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Fuji Film X Pro 2, which I can is at my desk, I can run and grab if we wanted to, uh, has an optic hybrid optical electronic viewfinder. But you don't get that patch in the center to oh, manually man. focus. You line up a double image with a rangefinder to make it a single image in the center, and that's how you know you're in focus. There are digital focus aids in the Fuji X-Pro2 EVF to kind of do the same, uh, but not it's not with the optical finder. I gotta say, looking through this thing, I am flashing back to like my high school photography class. Yeah, it's it's the, the viewfinder in this is, yeah. and the M10 is the best that like it's done. Uh, one of the things, it's a 0.73 magnification, which is just, pretty much the same as the 0.72 on film, mm -hmm. uh, but the eye relief on this is better. So even with the 28 millimeter, and I wear eyeglasses, 28 millimeter is the widest set of frame mm -hmm. lines. I do have to squeeze the camera kind of close to my face to see the okay. frame lines, but I also have the, I, I own the M Type 240, the previous generation digital, which is a 0.68X finder. Mm -hmm. And on a, with a 28 with that, I'm really, to get accurate framing, I'm switching to live view because I can't see all the lines. Oh, okay. Uh, with my particular eyesight. So now you wanted to point out something about the design here. So I wanted to, I wanted to pull up a picture of an old Leica on the big board so that we could, we could talk about that Let's interesting do it. thing. Yeah. Okay, so um, what we have here is this is a Leica M3. And, and uh, what I wanted to tell the crowd is that this is actually my grandfather's Leica M3. Uh, my grandfather was a professional photographer named Arthur Rothstein. Uh, he was pretty prominent in the 1930s through the 1960s. And this was his camera, which is appearing on some sort of like a collector people website. And now you were saying that the digital camera is maintaining uh, these like key design elements of the yeah, top of the Yeah, it obviously camera. does not have the film uh, advanced lever, but does have this little nub here in the back which is a thumb rest, which kind of serves the same purpose. Mm -hmm. The shutter speed dial is the same. The shutter release is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have, and the ISO control on this is the film rewind button. Yeah, that, and, that, that really cracked me up. And we were talking before about this before the show, but I just, I just need to point out, and I love that your grandfather had serial number one, 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 one. Uh, I, I kind of flaked this morning. I was gonna bring my M3 in, which is like a 106 serial number, so mm -hmm. a couple years older. But man, that's a beautiful camera. Well, he started shooting with Leica in, uh, I believe, 1934. Okay. Um, and you know, this was uh, I, I, earlier. We determined that this was probably one of his one of his early cameras yeah. that he was using to shoot uh, during the Great Depression. And he stayed faithful to Leica for uh, the next 40 years. Yeah. So after about 30 years of a relationship with this company, yeah. you can probably get the serial number you want. Yeah. No, yeah. definitely, especially with someone as great and famous as your grandfather. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing to point out, with the, just to, just mm -hmm. to go back to the picture of the, the 30s Leica, uh -huh. one of the differences, one of the advances Leica made in the 60s and something that's stuck to this camera is with that camera, to focus, you look through one window and to frame your shot, you look through another. Okay. There's a separate rangefinder viewer and a separate viewfinder. Oh, wow. This puts the rangefinder mm -hmm. in the viewfinder, so you're seeing the action and focusing all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And if you shoot with, the viewfinder is a fixed width, so if you shoot with say a 35 or 50 millimeter lens, you're actually seeing what's outside the frame a little bit, which allows you to anticipate action, which is okay. why street photographers, uh, uh, Cartier Bresson, Bresson most famously, love shooting with the Leica. Oh wow. Okay, so uh, flashing back to your review here. So now, um, now I also notice that uh, I also notice that it has Wi-Fi, which is yeah. something I don't necessarily expect from a camera that looks this retro. Well, yes, uh, Wi-Fi is built in, uh -huh. uh, so you can transfer images to your smartphone. Okay. Uh, iOS only. Mm -hmm. There's no Android app for the M series ah, because to take the memory card out, mm -hmm. just like taking film when you taking film out, you have to take the bottom plate you off. Take the whole bottom off, just like film. And then you get your memory card uh -huh. and your battery compartment. The batteries in here as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's the what's the battery life like? That's a significant battery. Uh, it's good. I mean, okay. you, especially if you're just using the. Using the, the, the viewfinder, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about charging it during the day. If you're using the live view heavily and if you're using a lot of Wi-Fi, sure, invest in the spare battery. 
Uh, but if you're just out making images the day, turning the camera off in between, the power draw is not big because there's not a lot of electronics in use when you're shooting. Now, does this record video at all? No, this okay. one does not do video. This is a still camera. Leica still sells the M-Type 240, which uh -huh. is the previous generation. It's also 24 megapixels. It's not quite as good in low light. You get some mm -hmm. banding and high ISOs. It's a little, it's like two millimeters thicker, mm -hmm. and that throws some people off. Uh, it never really bothered me. I can go from the M3 to the 240, and they, they feel very similar. And I even have my my M240 in a, uh, a leather a leather case, so it mm. actually makes it a little bit thicker. Uh, and I like that feel. Uh, but what was the question? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I went on a rant there. The, quest, I, the question was initially about video, and you were saying oh, yes. there's a, the there are other Leica like models the that record video. The M240 is still on sale and records video, just oh, okay. the 1080p. Don't buy a Leica for video. Okay. Just don't do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, get a Sony. <laughs> Let's take some other questions. What keeps this from being an editor's choice? Uh, that's a we. It's a rangefinder, and we don't have a separate category for rangefinder, so we lump it in with mirrorless cameras. Because it's the only one. And because it's just like a in in there, it's not like it's competing with other digital rangefinders. If if someone else starts making a digital rangefinder again, Epson used to make one. Uh, of all companies, yeah, to make one. Epson made one for a little while. Uh, you know, sure, we'll, 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 we'll put them head to head. Uh, PC Mag has a policy. We have a long standing policy that we do not give an editor's choice in a category of one. And so there are various, like I've run into this while reviewing cell phones and tablets, for instance, there are various devices that are just so unique and so different from everything else on the market. The BlackBerry Key 2 comes to mind as currently the only keyboarded. Uh, the only keyboard smartphone out there, yeah. where it is a category of one. And the Editor's Choice uh, badge for us is about being able to select one out of a confusing bunch of products. Yeah, and you know, we give this a four star rating, which I don't give out like candy. Uh, it, it takes a little bit to get four from me and, and higher, you know, is even, even tougher. Uh, we did give the M-Type 240 an Editor's Choice when we reviewed it, mm -hmm. uh, and that was a very different camera landscape. Sony mm -hmm. had not yet released the, the A7 full-frame mm -hmm. mirrorless at that point. So if you wanted something with live view to use your lens, any lens on, uh, that for a few months in between its release and the Sony, mm -hmm. Sony announcement uh, was it. And it's actually a year between the announcement of, of the M-Type 240 and, and the Sony, but that's, you know, neither but here I, there. But I think it's a, the, if you, if, if you love rangefinders, yeah. like is your only game in town. Right, the point but, is this doesn't have as broad appeal as a Sony mirrorless camera. It does not. That's Isn't the it? issue. Yeah. yeah, this is a very, it is, it is a very beloved, passionately beloved niche product, but once you lump it in with the other mirrorless cameras in the broader, in the, in the, in the broader context, uh, it's not your crowd pleaser. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's very much a niche. And, and you know, it is essentially a mirrorless camera. It, it, the design predates, obviously, the modern autofocus mirrorless. But when you look at the Sony, the A7s, and even the new Nikon Z, mm -hmm. and the Canon EOS R, and the APS-C ones, the Fuji films, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Olympus and Panasonic, they owe a lot to this. Uh, so now, now, let's say you are, you are a Leica shooter. You have an older Leica model. Okay. Um, which models do you consider upgrading from to this one as opposed to not investing the seven thousand dollars? Okay, uh, I personally own an M Type Two Forty. Mm -hmm. My previous Leica had been the M Eight. I skipped the M Nine generation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, if I had the money in the bank, mm -hmm. I would certainly think about upgrading to okay. this uh, for the better high ISO performance mm -hmm. than the M-Type 240 mm -hmm. and the quieter shutter. Mm -hmm. I was emailing with a gentleman who is thinking about going moving from the M10 to the M10P mm -hmm. just because of the touchscreen and the quieter wow. shutter. Wow. That's not enough for me, but not everybody is in the same financial situation. Yeah. You know, I, some people look at $8,000 and are like, okay, sure, why not? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't I don't personally think I could say, okay, $8,000 for a quieter shutter, but yeah. I guess there are people out there. Right. Yeah. If you already have the M10, I wouldn't. Personally, I would not recommend upgrading mm. uh, for most folk. Uh, if you have the Type 240 and you do a lot of light, low light shooting, mm -hmm. high ISO, mm -hmm. you will notice better results from the, the M10 or this, they're the same sensor. Okay. The M10 is selling, I think now for around 7,000, maybe it'll remain 7,295, somewhere in that range. And so, that difference between the M10 and the M10P, you definitely get this one. If you're looking between the two, I would buy the M10P. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you don't have, it, 
there's some aesthetic differences. You don't have the red dot logo. The M10P has, or the M10 has a red dot right here where mm -hmm. this rangefinder adjustment screw is, mm -hmm. uh, and you don't get the scripted, That's the so scripted pretty. top plate that matches your old '60s Leica. <laughs> okay. Any more yeah. questions out there? No. So this is the this is the Leica M10P, the brand new full frame seven thousand dollar digital rangefinder from Leica. Looks a lot like a. Whoops, looks a lot like a 1965 Leica, but it is 2018 with your 2018 features. We gave it four stars. It is not Netter's Choice because it is a niche product, but it is a lovely and excellent niche product, which we highly recommend. Thank you all for watching. This has been One Cool Thing from PCMag.com. We will be back live on Facebook tomorrow at 10 a.m. with another cool thing. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We have a cool thing every weekday.